Linear phase EQs. Boys and girls, that sounds really fancy, right? Like the next level EQ, some kind of superior EQing. All those modern EQ plugins, they have a linear phase mode. And if you hit that button, you can see, you know, more CPU usage, a latency that must be something cool, you know, better quality EQ. So let's linear phase EQ all our tracks. Great idea. <laughs> not. Believe me, it's not a good idea. I mean, linear phase EQs, they have their place, don't get me wrong, but most of the time you don't need them. And sometimes, and that's what I'm gonna show you today, linear phase EQing can destroy your tracks. So let's destroy a snare track, a good sounding snare track with a linear phase EQ. So what we got here is a live recording I did with a band called No Turning Back. And it sounds like this. By the way, there will be, I think, a four hour documentary about how we tracked this EP live in a pretty cool studio in the Czech Republic. That was a very interesting session. Again, it's a live session with everybody in the room playing. And, uh, you know, you can watch that documentary and you can even download the multi tracks and mix it for yourself. This will all be released in my upcoming academy the Cola Audio Cult. So if you're interested, you should not only subscribe to this channel, which you already should have done, by the way, shame on you. You should also subscribe to my email list. There's a link below so you don't miss the Academy in October. If you subscribe to the email list, there's a lot of other free cool stuff there. It just, yeah, link below, check it out. Anyway, I just wanna talk about the drums here. I wanna talk about the snare track. Let's just solo the drums. <laughs> And now let's solo only this top snare mic. Sounds like this. I'm looping just a few snare hits. Uh, you can see this is already a rough mix, so I've already put some plugins on the snare drum. And I want to have a look at this plugin. So this is Pro Q3 from FabFilter, right now running in a zero latency mode, which means it's not a linear phase mode. And I've already reduced some annoying frequencies around, what is this, 280 and 430. I just assume there was some kind of ringing there. Let's have a listen and let's bypass the plugin. That clearly makes it sound better, just sounds a little honky without the EQ. Maybe I should also boost the fundamental frequency a little bit, like to give it a little more punch. Now let's bypass the EQ again. That sounds nice, right? So, shouldn't we use a linear phase EQ instead? That must be higher quality, right? So let's do that. And let's switch from zero latency to linear phase. And can you hear that? Suddenly, there's some kind of reverse effect there, some kind of whoop, whoop, whoop on all the frequencies that I, that I changed. Have a listen. Especially in the lows, whoop, whoop. Concentrate on the transient in the lows. Let's go back to zero latency. That's a clear punch, linear phase. But even in the higher frequencies, There's some kind of whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's go back to zero latency. And it's gone. So that means something is happening here. And I can tell you what's happening. It's called ringing. And that is the biggest problem that linear phase EQs introduce. Let me say something positive first. The good thing about linear phase EQs is 
that they don't introduce any phase shift if you boost or cut. Because usually if you do this with a traditional EQ, you will get a phase shift, especially around here and around here. And that's not gonna happen if you use a linear phase EQ, which seems to be a good thing. I gotta say that this phase shift is most of the time not audible. It becomes audible if you have several microphones on one source or if you have several tracks of the same source. So let's say you have copied your bass track onto two tracks and you are EQing only one of them, or you have multiple mics on your guitar cab, or like in this case, we have overheads and snare drum and the snare is on both overheads and the closed mic. So whenever the same source is on different microphones and you e start EQing, then it might be helpful to use a linear phase EQ because you don't introduce any phase shifts around your EQ bands. But as long as you only have one mic on your guitar or as long as you only have one bass track, you will not hear the phase shifts that are introduced by a traditional EQ design and you don't need a linear phase EQ because back to the drawback of the linear phase principle, it introduces something called ringing. And that was the whoop, whoop, whoop reverse effect that we just heard here. And it's very important to know when this ringing is being introduced because there are certain factors that make it worse. So this is what you got to remember. First of all, if you use linear phase EQs on transient material, like on percussive material with a lot of transients, like this snare drum, it is dangerous. The second thing is, if you use very narrow EQ bands, that's what we're doing here, right? Because we just want to get rid of a certain ring in the snare drum that makes it even more dangerous. And if you are in a lower frequency uh, area, not somewhere up here, but down here, you will hear it even more. So what we're doing right now is the worst case scenario. And you can hear the more I boost here, the more you will hear the ringing. Let's have a listen. Let's go back to linear phase and just ridiculously boost this frequency. I mean, this sounds stupid, but in the zero latency traditional mode, you can hear that the transient down there stays intact and stays punchy like this. And the linear phase mode makes the transient soft and undefined. Sounds like somebody's fading in the low end of my snare drum. Well, this is an extreme example, but this is a very good example to show you what happens if you don't focus on the details. I'm sure a lot of you have EQ'd a snare drum or a kick drum or a tom in your life, and then later just switched the EQ to linear phase mode believing it would be something superior. But what you were doing was killing your transients. So once again, in this quick and dirty video, once again, if you have, let's say, multiple microphones on one source, on a guitar cab, two microphones, especially, I do that when I use low cut filters, for example, it can make sense to put them into linear phase mode because if you are EQing, you are introducing phase differences between the channels, which means around the center of your high cut or at the edges of your peak filters, the phase relation between those two channels will change and something will happen. I can't tell you what that is. Might be something cool, might be something bad. But if you want to avoid that, if you just want to EQ, you got to use a linear phase EQ in those moments. But if you are EQing a single tracks, I don't see a reason for using linear phase EQs. But maybe I'm wrong. You let me know. Maybe there's a reason. I haven't found one. And even in this case, where we have a snare drum and overheads and room, so we already have like several tracks more or less on the snare drum, it makes sense not to use a linear phase EQ because we are EQing a low frequency area, which makes it dangerous. And we are using very narrow EQ bands, high Qs, which makes it even more dangerous. One thing I forgot to say is, if you're boosting frequencies, it's even more dangerous than cutting. And finally, we are using this on a source material with 
a lot of transient information. So this is the worst case scenario. If you hear a snare, a kick drum, uh, toms, or even an acoustic guitar, and you want to change the low end, don't use a linear phase EQ if you care for your transients. All right, that's all I wanted to show you today. So just be a little more careful when you EQ and find out what works for you. I hope this was helpful. Again, this is a cool sounding track and uh, we're gonna come up with a very nice documentary about me recording this band, No Turning Back from the Netherlands, live in the studio. This is just a rough mix, but uh, eventually you will also see me mixing that song when we have recorded the vocals. Um, once again, feel free to subscribe to my, no, you have to feel free. You have to subscribe to both this channel and to my email list. Um, um, yeah, in order to, to make me happy, to satisfy me. Please do that. I'm just kidding. Do whatever you want. Have a listen. I mean, this is not fully mixed, but this sounds pretty cool, right? And you can hear the energy of a live recording. Can you hear it? I don't know. You let me know. All right. Uh, leave a comment, please. Uh, whatever. Let me know how you like this video. Uh, let me know how you like the recording. Let me know how you use linear phase EQ or how you don't use them. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I see you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye-bye.